The Bar Star Podcast is a show full of stories, opinions, and sarcasm. Hosted by a working musician based in Louisville, Kentucky. Wait a second. This guy knows he's a drummer, right? Not an actual musician? Why would anybody want to... Never mind. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Bar Star Podcast. I am your host, Stephen O'Reilly. I want to thank you guys for coming back once again to hang out with my stupid ass. I appreciate it. I appreciate the ratings and the reviews and the subscriptions. Please keep them coming. Please tell your friends. Let's grow this damn show. Some of you have been slacking. I ain't gonna say no names. Because I really don't have any fucking names to say, but it's really sounded cool. Anyway... Thank you guys for all the support, as always. I hope everybody is doing well. I hope everybody had a good week. And as always, I hope you guys went out and did some shit. Please take a minute to check out my sponsors. You know the deal by now. Prophecy Inc., located in the fabulous Highlands and Louisville Music Studios that is undergoing some changes, but they still are a sponsor of the show. And I appreciate both of them very, very much. And make sure you check out my website, And while you're on my website, use the link on my website, in my website, at my website, however the fuck you say it, to go to Amazon to buy all of your shit. I don't want to know what kind of shit you're buying, but go buy some shit on Amazon through my website. Gives me a little bit of a kickback, helps out the show, and I greatly appreciate it. And while you're at my website, which is barstarpodcast.com, please make sure you buy a t-shirt. Still sitting in my garage. You fuckers are slacking. Today on the show... I hang out with a one Miss Lucy Oglesby, or just Lucy Oglesby. I can't talk to Lucy and not call her Miss Lucy. Uh, She's a very cool chick. She's got a really interesting story. She's a fucking good kid, and I mean that literally. She's a kid. She's just turned 18. Uh, Monster little bass player. I say little because she's not a very big human. Um, but she plays upright bass. She plays electric as well. But she plays upright bass when we play with Scott Smith, who was on my show last week. If you didn't hear that episode, you need to go back and listen to it. I'll wait. Okay, I'm done waiting. I don't have that much patience today. I've got too much shit to do. Anyway, Lucy and I had a chance to sit down after sound check at a wedding we did a couple weeks ago. And we just made some time set out on our front porch. It was actually a, a beautiful farmhouse. The place we played the wedding was very, very cool. No, I don't remember the name of it. Don't ask me. But it was in the middle of fuck nowheresville. But it was awesome. It was a great wedding. The bride and groom were super, super nice. Very, very cordial people. Very appreciative. It was an awesome wedding. So my congratulations to Abaca and Rob. Abaca, such a cool fucking name. Uh, Very great people. And uh, the wedding was beautiful. We got to play some tunes and hang out. And it was just a really, really great day. And as I said, before we played the wedding, after sound check, Lucy and I sat on the front porch and we just had a conversation. Uh, Her and I bonded the first time we met. Musically bonded. Obviously, it's... There's... I'm way fucking old to be bonding with 18-year-olds. But because I used to be a teacher... Uh, I I see certain things in younger kids and especially musically that just kind of, oh, that's that's really interesting. I just kind of latch on to it. And that's what happened with her and I. She's like my little sister and uh, she's a hell of a player, hell of a person. And I just wanted to get her story because she has an interesting story, especially as young as she is. So that's it. I'm out of here. I got shit I got to do. I will talk to you guys on the other side of my conversation with a one... Miss Lucy. Who's going to lay in the grass? Mm. That's really bizarre. Hmm. Look at that. Would you like to say my numbers, darling? Do I? I don't, I'm asking you a damn question. I don't know what that means. Numbers. 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 <laughs> okay, I've done a few of these episodes that I start with, where the fuck are we? 
We are in Sulphur, Kentucky. Is that right? Uh, we're at Lagrange. Lagrange, like right outside of Lagrange, I think, on Sulphur Road. Oh, okay, cool. Got it. Yeah, I don't really know where the fuck that is. Okay, dokie. So uh, we are actually about to play a wedding. Uh, last week, you guys heard me chatting with Scott T. Smith <laughs> in his smooth voice. And I said if I was lucky, I would get Miss Lucy. And I'm sitting with Miss Lucy. Hello. Hello, darling. How are you? Good. Are you good? Yeah. Tired. Ready to go home and get out of this heat. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, the question. It is pretty hot out is, here. Why do people in Kentucky think it's a good idea to have outdoor weddings in the summer? I'm not from here. So I will just go with stupidity. <laughs> Seems like a good answer, right? I agree with that, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to throw myself under the bus because as long as we've been playing together, I have no fucking idea what your last name is. Wow. Uh, my, last, my last name is Oglesby. I knew that. It's an English name. It means King of Kings. Oh, shit. Ooh. Oglesby. Oglesby. Okay, so Miss Lucy Oglesby. Nah, you're just going to be Miss Lucy. Miss Lucy. Forever. So I wanted you on the show because you have a cool story. I think you have a cool story. Uh, much like Scott and me, even though I've been here forever, you are a transplant. I am. You are not from here. I am not. Where are you from, little child? I am from Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I grew up on the south side, so like south suburbs. Just where I'm from, hanging out. Uh, actually, we grew up right next to where my dad grew up next to, so I lived right next door to my grandparents. Oh, that's cool. So we just like kind of went back and forth from houses. I spent a lot of time hanging out with my grandma, just making cookies and stuff like that. I had making a very, cookies? Yeah. I had a very like, I had a very city lifestyle, but my family was very like country, if that makes sense. Hmm. No. I'm, no? Uh, no. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're like a domesticated suburbanite living in the city. Yeah. Like that? Yeah, that's sure. pretty good. No, that's wow. pretty good. Look at me. <laughs> Not bad for an old dude. Um, you. When did you move down here? I moved down here actually uh, almost a year ago from June, this June. So Today's June 1st. Oh my gosh, today's June. I didn't even think about that. So June 15th will be my one year anniversary living in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh my God, they're so cute. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, so I moved down here basically for <coughs> music school, U of L. Nice. Um, my sister also has a house down here, so I thought it was a good idea to move in with her. So yeah, I just came down here, moved in, went to school. Very cool. Now you are, uh, for those of you that don't know and didn't read the description of my show, which you fuckers need to. I spend so much time writing those damn things. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, you are a bass player, and more importantly to me, you are a stand-up bass player. Yes, I am. Which makes me ridiculously happy, because you're really fucking good at it. And the reason that I wanted you, the other reason I wanted you on the show besides you have a cool story is you are only 18. Yeah, I actually, I'm... You're like a child. I'm freshly 18. I turned 18 on Christmas Day, this last Christmas. Wow. So I was still 17 when I moved down here. And went started going to college. That's crazy. So not only are you super young, you're super smart. I'll say it. Girlfriend, you moved into a new city at 17 to go to college. That's pretty I mean, smart. I mean, I'm smart, but I'm not <laughs> like... Okay, I, I got you to say I'm smart. I tricked you. High five. In a microphone. <laughs> go ahead. No, I agree. I am smart. Um, I'm very logical, but I'm not like some like book smart nerd school person. I just like I get through that so that I don't have to deal with it anymore no no, fair enough that makes sense um now did you come down here and we'll get into when and why you started playing bass in a second but did you move down here specifically for music or just to go to L as a school or both for music or none of the above for music okay so my like thought process was that louisville is a very music-based city but Mm -hmm. it's a lot smaller than chicago Mm -hmm. so it's a lot easier to like find people and like jam with and you be able to like build a reputation and then also the university of louisville music is a great school their jazz program is amazing which is what i'm in 
Um, so I just kind of came down here for like the lifestyle and the music and just kind of get my foot in the door because it's, it's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Right. Which is awesome that it, you, at your age you have a, a goal. Do you like it down here? I love it down here. Right? Not what I expected. I was waiting for you to go, eh, it's all right. <laughs> no, I do. I mean, this whole um, being in the middle of nowhere sometimes kind of freaks me out. I'm not about that. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, when it gets dark, I feel like someone's going like, to come, like, shoot me or, like, <laughs> shot me or something. <laughs> I think you got to worry more about ghosts than getting shot. Yeah. Well, and I don't even believe in that shit. It's, <laughs> that's just how deep in the fucking country we are today. Yeah. That was an S10, a very small truck that was that loud. That's how country we are right now. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so when did you, because you're so fucking old, when did you figure out that you were interested in music and was bass your first instrument? So bass was not my first instrument. Mm. Um, I think I was just always interested in music ever mm-hmm. since I was little. My mom played the piano. My mom's. My yeah, mom. From Chicago. Um, she played the piano and she taught piano lessons outside of the house. So I kind of taught myself how to play piano because right. I would just kind of go up there and like fiddle around. And then my older sister played violin. So, and my older sister is about seven years older than me. So she's a little bit older. So I'd be little and I'd be sitting in her violin lessons. Gotcha. And eventually when I was four, my mom decided, my parents decided to put me in violin, violin lessons too. And I just kind of fell in love with it. I excelled. I really got So you started playing violin at four? Started playing violin at four. I also started Irish dancing at four. That's crazy. I was still shitting my pants at four, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'm too old to remember that far back. No, that's really cool, though. And you, mm-hmm. uh, and this is more for my listeners than my own edification. Were you, quote unquote, classically trained, or did you just have lessons for a while? I was classically trained. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Very cool. That's why you gravitated towards the stand-up base, isn't it? Actually, that's not. Damn it, I'm fucking up my own show. Carry on. So, fast forward to sixth grade. Uh, well, actually fifth grade. So, <laughs> <laughs> go back a year. Um, so, like, you know, in school they have, like, concert bands mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, so, following in my older sister's footsteps, she played the flute. So, I picked up the flute. And in sixth grade, (laughs) (laughs) what? (laughs) You can't see me playing the flute, can you? No. 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 Go ahead. Exactly. No. Um, My band director at my middle school, he was an amazing saxophone player Mm -hmm. and he was really into jazz. And he like, he like actually played out in jazz. Like he had jazz gigs. Like that's what he did. So he was very like influenced and like he loved their jazz program. So he really built that up. And so I joined the jazz band because I was like, oh, I'm flute. I can switch over to saxophone because every 10-year-old girl is like, saxophone, 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 jazz, jazz, jazz. Like, that's just the thing. (laughs) (laughs) Saxophone, 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 jazz, jazz, jazz. (laughs) We just wrote a song. Or a cheer. Oh, we wrote a cheer. Ooh. Yeah, because you couldn't put that in a song. There's too no, many syllables. No. Fuck that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, and so I try. I played saxophone for like two weeks, mm-hmm. and then I realized I hated it. Uh, I hated it. You don't know this about me, but I played guitar for about a week, and I hated wow. it. Sucked. It hated just, it. It was, it was horrible. I, I can identify. Anyways. <laughs> I went up to my band director and I was like, yo, it's not working out. Like, <laughs> yo. <laughs> this whole like read thing, it's weird. And then I was like, oh, I can play piano. Like, let me try piano. And then he was like, wait a minute. You used to play violin. We need a bass player. And they had um, like two upright basses at the school. Mm. So he just like pulled it out. He said, here, you can read bass clef. It's just like a violin. The strings are backward. Have fun. That simple. That simple. And that was the wow. one instrument that my mom told me not to come home with. Because it's so big. Yeah. And then <laughs> I came home and I was like, hey, mom, <laughs> guess what I play now? <laughs> Look what I got. Hey. Um, but then I just kind of fell in love with it. It was like love at first touch. Mm-hmm. Like I touched it and I was like, yep, like this is where I'm meant to be. Um, and then my band director's friend who played in a big band with him is a phenomenal bass player from in Chicago. Right. And so I started taking lessons from him, and I took lessons with him up until the point that I left for Louisville. Oh. So you're a good kid. 
I am a good kid. Yeah, like my other former students, <laughs> bastards never practiced. Some of them didn't. I've actually had, I don't know if you know this, I've had 13 or 14 kids go on to music school. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, got a couple in Berkeley. I had a couple go to Musicians Institute in California. I've had quite a few go to AIM, which is the school I graduated from. I had a couple go to Belmont in Nashville. One went to the whatever the music program is here at U of L. I'm not 100% sure. And I'm not belittling it. I've just never yeah. researched it. I'm old. I'm not going back to school. Fuck that. <laughs> I did my time. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've had some pretty successful students. And from a teacher or former teacher, students like you make us happy. Because not only, obviously, you took lessons that long, you were doing your shit, but you can play your ass off. Like, you don't play like somebody that's only 18. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's not an insult. I'm being serious. No, well, I mean, you have to keep in mind, and I think sometimes, this is probably what, our sixth, fifth gig together, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And I think sometimes you forget that I'm 44. I'm twice your age. I know. I'm fucking old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm twice your age plus some more. Um, but the only reason I say that is because I played obviously with a lot of people mm-hmm. and you don't play like an, like an 18 year old. You don't play like somebody that's only been playing, let's call it 15 years, even though it's actually way less than that. Yeah. I mean, when it, almost nine, I was, I was, I was trying to do math. I almost had to take my shoe off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you've been, I mean, you've been playing music technically for 15 years, but you've only been playing bass for like nine. Mm hmm. And you you just you're much more mature than that, and I'm going to give credit to you, obviously, for doing the work because you're a little badass. But also, I think that a lot of it, and this is again from the former teacher in me, I think a lot of it comes from what you were immersed in in the jazz and all that stuff, mm-hmm. because that's just not fucking easy. And you're starting no. at the hard stuff, and you start there. Everything, and I don't want to belittle any other kind of music, but everything else becomes, oh, I got this. I can figure this out. Yeah. And then you get like a Coltrane tune or something like that, and you're going, hold up, what do what? And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, exactly. That's how I am. So school's kicking my ass. I will admit that. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's why I came to music school, because I, I needed my ass kicked. I was like, if I'm going to be a great bass player, you know, I might You have well to push yourself. Yeah. You don't have a choice. I'm just checking my battery. That's what I keep looking down for. And I have to squint, because I'm old, and my glasses are in my car, and my car's a fucking 14 miles that way. It is pretty out here, though. So what are you, um, and if you say music, I might actually punch you. What are you taking at UofL? Are you taking a a multitude of classes, or are you just in two or three? So my major is jazz performance. See, so I learned something today, kids. I didn't even know UofL had that. Yes. Nice. Very cool. So um, I'm in what they call like the jazz studio. Mm-hmm. So since I'm a performance major, most of my classes are like I had to be in a combo, I had to be in ensembles. I have to I'm basically playing like I had to take private lessons, um, and then I had to take like theory and like jazz theory and like piano and like all those little. I like how your voice just yeah. dropped down. You're like oh, yeah, all, all like that other stupid, shit that I like, want to do. Ed, like music classes <laughs> that you really just have to take to get like a degree or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. That shit I don't want to do. Yeah, I got to take that stuff too. Um, but then I'm also, I'm trying to get a minor in classical performance. Oh, very cool. So I'm going to do some chambers. I'm going to try and work in the orchestra a little bit. Um, I'm going to take secondary lessons with the classical teacher there. He's amazing. So. Oh, who is he? Sidney King. Very cool. Never heard of him, but that doesn't matter. Well, that's very sad. He's, he's, he's more badass than me. Do I look like a bass player to you? No, you don't. So how the fuck would I know a bass I professor know. at the I, school? I think you should know him, though. I think you're right. I think you should. Maybe you should introduce me. Maybe I will. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we get along, because we can. <laughs> exactly, because we're both, uh, you're 18 and I'm 15-ish in my head. Um, but... Y- what else are you, do you take any, I guess that this is, again, for my own curiosity, um, and most of my listeners know that, and I know you haven't listened to many of my shows, if any, you should have. Um, yes, you. Don't look off in the fucking woods. I'm talking to you. Um, are you taking anything outside of music, or is every class you're taking music related? Um, I have, like, my gen ed, so I have, like, I have to take, like, one math class, like, one science, like, I'm English and stuff like that. But right. 
Not really. Um, well, that's cool just, then. Yeah, just because being in music school, it's already so hard, and they push you so much. Like I'm, like it's killing me. I don't <laughs> think I would. I don't think I would <laughs> be able to take any other classes. Right. When I went to AIM, it was it was, and I'm I'm not comparing. Um, I'm just can just identify because when I went to AIM, uh, and I don't know if you know this story, and my listeners, if I told this story a long time ago, so I'll retell it the short version. I had been touring and doing all this shit and I went, mm. everything kind of went to garbage. This band in Atlanta paid me a lot of money to move down there. We were going to be the next greatest thing and this was going to happen and that was going to happen. And of course it all imploded and I was kind of left on my own. Just, I don't say that with any disdain. It was just fact. It's what happened. And then when I went to AIM, I thought, well, fuck, I was on tour and I was just, I opened for whatever band it was, Vertical Horizon and all that shit. And a month and a half ago, I was in front of 10,000 people in Charlottesville, Virginia it's going to be easy. I went in there and fell on my fucking face. Oh, yeah. And it was super humbling. So that's the only reason I'm telling you, you specifically that story, because I don't think I've ever told you that. It's, I can identify with it, because you think you know what you're doing, and then you get all this stuff thrown at you, and you go, oh, shit, I suck. Yeah, and um, <laughs> especially, like, just from, like, playing with Scott or something. Like, if I'm playing in the public. Scott, never heard of him. That, that Scott T. Smith boy. Oh yeah, that he's dude. singing right now. Actually, he is in the. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to pull like triple duty. Ooh. Anyways, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Whenever Squirrel. I play with like Scott or something, um, mm-hmm. people come up to like, "Oh my gosh, you're so great! You're so talented! Like you're amazing! Like blah 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 blah." And then I'll be in school, and it's like, "You suck! You suck! You suck! You <laughs> suck!" <laughs> it's like I walk into, and there's not a lot of girls in this jazz program. It's a very male-dominated thing. Uh, well, music in general, unfortunately, is kind of male dominated, and mm-hmm. I don't know why. And uh, not in a whole lot of girls want to play stand up bass or upright bass, as you no, call it. Let me call it the correct term. Uh, and nobody like you plays it because you're four foot two and you weigh 80 pounds. <laughs> Actually, not quite that small, but you're close. Five foot two. See? <laughs> <laughs> you're a foot off. <laughs> I was a foot yeah. off. So, like. Math. I get that so math like, thing. I have my oh shoes my on. Oh, my gosh. So, like, walking. <laughs> into this room or like a combo or something Mm -hmm. like my first day my i remember this i walked into my combo like my first combo freshman year first semester and it was just uh, guys it was all these guys they were all like juniors and i was like why am i in this combo like (laughs) like what (laughs) what are you trying to do to me why are you 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 trying to kill me but i walk in you know it's like in a movie where everybody stops and they just turn and they look at you Mm -hmm. i'm like Hey guys, what's up? Hey dudes. How's it going? <laughs> hey. Because, <laughs> you know, they they automatically think, they're like, oh, she can't do shit. She just got in here because she's cute. And, right. you know, she's, that's just like a lot It's of unfortunate, but it's true. Mm-hmm. I um, won't deny it. I've done it. I'm super, fu- I'm not nearly as guilty of it anymore. Actually, I shouldn't even say I'm, I'm not, I don't think I've been guilty of it in the past few years, but I used to be one of the worst. Oh, that bitch can't play. Look at her. She's got her fucking stupid heels on. Mm-hmm. And, dumb hooker whatever and then she plays and i'm going fuck you're an asshole you're an asshole i've been guilty of it for years i've i have no problem admitting when i'm wrong i don't do it anymore because now i'm like oh chicks want to actually fucking do this Mm -hmm. they don't care that they're chicks they just want to be a human that plays music and that's what kind of changed my perception again not defending it or excusing myself i'm fucking old in the 90s or when you have courtney love yeah, Alana Miles, who's actually a fucking badass, by the way. Mm-hmm. But I, and Tori Amos, which I love, Tori Amos. But you didn't have chicks in your neighborhood that they turn an amp on or get behind a drum kit or play a bass, and they're going, "Fuck, you're goddamn awesome." They didn't give that much of a shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it shifted, and I don't really care. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's now it's I don't I'm just speaking for me. Yes, you guys can throw stones at me because I have done it. I admitted it. But I don't do it anymore because now people are just like, I, I want to play. Mm-hmm. And I don't give a shit about the gender. I just want to play. But it still is, it still does run rampant, I guess is a good term. Yeah. And it, you get judged. I get judged. Look at me. Oh, totally. And like, it took me, it probably took me this whole year just to gain some respect. Well, that's because you met me. And I said, damn, girl. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You almost dropped that mic. That yeah, I funny. did. That no, <laughs> no. Nope. Um, but the reason why is because there was another 
There's another bass player in the same year as me. He is also from Chicago. He's from the north side, though, so he's not as cool. Not he's south also, side. <laughs> yeah. No, he's also from Chicago. He's like six foot two. His hands are giant. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, my gosh, Tyler's so good. Tyler's so good. And I'm like, I'm doing everything that Tyler is doing, like, way better than he is. Y'all just don't see it. So, like, it, it made me mad for a minute. I can understand that. But I get then... That. They finally started like gaining respect and like, oh, okay, you kind and of- paying attention. Yeah, I think a lot of it is paying attention. Honestly, mm-hmm. again, and not, I'm not going to reiterate it, but when I used to do it, it was because I wasn't paying attention. Mm-hmm. I would just go, oh fuck this, I don't have time for this shit. I wasn't paying attention. I was in my own little ego land. Yeah, exactly. So it was a hard, it was a hard first year, but I think finally going to be getting somewhere. Think you're going to kick its ass? Maybe I freaking hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really want to. It's really hard, but I can do it. Ah, <laughs> three more years. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that long. Mm-hmm. So w- how and when did you meet Scott? Oh, Scotty boy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have only known Scott. Scott is kind of our child. If <laughs> yeah. she didn't figure that out from he last really week. I do. Kids. I feel like his mother sometimes. <laughs> like all the time, actually. And you're younger than him. Yes. So weird. Oh my gosh. I clean his apartment for him. You're like, an old soul. I really am. Oh my god, you clean his apartment for him? He's he, I've been in it. Oh my gosh. I'm like, bro, can you do your dishes? Like I don't even think he gets a bro, I think he gets a bra. No. Bra. Like okay. Seriously. <laughs> I like slept in his apartment while he was on his little road trip thing mm-hmm. because my house's air conditioning was broken and I was like, I'm not sleeping in this hot house. So I went over there. And I was like, no, I cleaned his dishes, <laughs> I did his laundry, no. I like cleaned his countertop. I was like, this is not how this is supposed to go. Like, I vacuumed, like, yeah, no, I cleaned it because he doesn't, he can't do it. Sometimes when people say things on my show, I deb- debate in my head on the spot if I'm going to edit it. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> so, uh, Scott, you need to clean your shit, bro. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Anyways, um, I met Scott. I've only been playing with him for like five six six months now since it's june right so not that long um i actually met him in october um our sound guy chris you know Mm -hmm. chris um he's actually my neighbor so and him and his wife they're friends with me and my sister very nice people um they're great people so he his wife's a hugger I love her. I forgot her name though. Kayla. Don't don't kill me, Kayla. That's Kayla. it. Yes, I've only met her once, and the one time I met her, she goes, oh, "You have to hug me before you leave because I'm a hugger." And I went, "Oh, oh, okay. Yep. Whatever you want. Yep. Okay. She's the best. Very cool people. And I think that was the first night I actually talked to him and her, Chris mm-hmm. and Kayla, because I had seen him at another show we did. I don't remember which one. Maybe the uh, that weird fuck bar we did. Z bar? No, not that one. We did one before we did the Goodwood. Good. It was the one before that, the weird outside thing with the, oh, God bless America. I don't know what you're talking about. Motherfucker, yes you do. I'm going to kill you in your face until you're you? dead. What? You're going to kill me? No. Oh. In your face until oh. you're dead. Oh. And that's worse. No, I would never kill you. Not today anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can take that. The place with the big water things. It was outside. Galaxy. Thank you. I knew you'd remember. You're smart. You said out. that was not outside. The back of where we played is technically outside. Eh. All right, meet me in the middle. Okay. All right, good. Anyway, that was the first night mm-hmm. that I actually talked to him uh, or met him. And then the, the following show was at Goodwood. That yep. was the first time I talked to him and Kayla is yep. what I was getting at. Because we were going to go to Scott's apartment for something. Because mm-hmm. Scott lives across from Goodwood. Yes, he does. Bet you owe them money, don't you, fucker? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Or am I? Um, but yes, they're very, very cool people. So anyway, carry on. It totally so, hijacked your story. Yeah, it totally did. Anyways. Hey, it's um, my fucking show. <laughs> Any questions? No. No. I love your face. I know. I love you too. Oh, thanks. Um, oh, good. So they invited us over for a bonfire. And Chris is like, oh, yeah, I met this guy, Scott. You might have seen him. He sang at, like, Nulu or something. And he, he's real cool. I just met up. We just invited him over. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Scott does have that personality, though. Yeah. And Once so you meet Chris. him, you just... Uh, Chris does as yeah. well. Once you meet both of them, you're just kind of like, oh, my God, I love you. Mm-hmm. Like, forever. I've known you forever. 
how's your mama name? And people know I never ask how your mama name is. Because chances are I'll never meet them. I hate small talk. It's a northerner in me. I don't like it. How's the weather? Yeah. Go the fuck outside. You'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. I'm anyway, the same sorry. Way. Go ahead. I know um, you are. Again, that's why I like my little sister. <laughs> I'm adopting this one as my little sister. <laughs> You're just going to stay right here. And uh, that's the end of that story. That's it. that's it. Anyway, um, go ahead. So we went over there, hanging out, hanging out at the bonfire. And I like to call Chris my um, surrogate father down mm. here in Louisville because that's what he acts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he acts like my father. He also, like him and Scott, he's been like bragging to Scott about me mm-hmm. or something. He's like, yeah, she's a bass player. She's real cool. Like, blah, blah, blah. You know Chris. Like, yeah. He's, he's going to do that. Yeah. So I showed up and Scott's like, oh, yeah, I've heard a lot about you. And I'm like, oh, great. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, and so like he sang a little bit and I was like, Yeah, he's real good and you know, I was like, Nice to meet you and everything and then like left and I um actually messaged him because I like to do this after I meet like somebody or something, I'll like message them or find them on social media and I'll be like, you know, thanks for meeting. Like it's nice to meet you. I'd really love to play with you. Like feel free to reach out. I'm very flexible, very free. I'd like mm. to do anything, like right. you know, whatever you want to do. I didn't get a text back. Shocker. Until December. Wow. Just to reiterate for those that are zoning out, you met him in October and he didn't text you till December. I thought he was what a, a I thought he was an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I would think worse than asshole. I was like, this motherfucker did not <laughs> Text and I told Chris that. I told Chris, I was like, Chris, he didn't text me back. And he was like, Yeah, he's probably an asshole then. Uh, (laughs) If Chris calls you an asshole, you're a super asshole. I was so mad. And then I get this text out of the blue and he was like, Oh, the stars have aligned and I I need to play with you, or like you wanna come do this thing at Odeon with me. It's like some fireside thing. And I was like, I almost said no. I was almost like. <laughs> uh, this will or will not make you feel better, but he does the same thing to me. Yep. <laughs> hey, dude, what's your availability <laughs> uh, in two hours? <laughs> I need you. <laughs> uh, sorry, bro. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so I accepted it. Might as well try it. We'll just see where this goes. And he calls me like that day and he's like, hey, I double booked myself. Do you want to just come along for the ride? And I was like, sure. And mind you, <laughs> we hadn't rehearsed. Nope. We hadn't. We did not do any. Like, I didn't know any of his songs. He, does, he doesn't have anything. Like, I couldn't listen to anything. I was like, he's like, we're just going to wing it. And I'm like, all right, we'll see. We'll see how this goes. That's the world of Scott T. Smith. So, <laughs> like, we played for like a half an hour at Goodwood. They just wanted like some Christmas songs or something. So it was like super simple. But even like when we were playing there, like, there was like a... You know, like the I musician, know. like Spark. I know. We were, we were just like, oh, okay. Like we we get each other. Mm-hmm. This feels good. Mm-hmm. We can we can fuck around with this. Like okay. And then after that, we went to Odeon and we played for like two hours, I think. Right. Just like there was like no amps. It was in that little like fireplace room. With, like, the oh yeah, yeah. And stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, the seventies room. Yeah, I love that room. I do too. That's a cool venue. So we just like played there and everything. Um, and I mean, his songs are pretty easy to catch on to. Like I, I have pretty good ear. So I was like, okay. And I was just like grooving and like one of his friends came up and then I, I played with him the next week cause it was like a weekly thing that he was doing at Odeon. Right. And then I just started, I became his bass player and now I'm known as Scott's bass player. <laughs> <laughs> you say, no, Scott's my singer. Mm. Um, but we've actually become very good friends. He's he's a good dude, and it's I don't remember when you and I met because um, I'm done talking about him. He's taking up enough of my fucking day. I'm just kidding. <laughs> when I I played with him, it's kind of a similar situation, and we him and I talked about it last week on our episode. But which weirdly you were sitting right next to him, which was <laughs> cool but weird because now we're doing an episode anyway. Um, we did two or three shows, and I never heard from him. For like four months. Mm-hmm. And then I get a text from Brian. 
And he says, what's your availability on such and such? And I went, uh, yeah, I'm open, sure. And he goes, well, we're going to have rehearsal at such and such. And I went, okay, cool. And that's when I drove out to the other side of the boondocks where Aaron lives. And it fucking sticks. What is it with people living in the goddamn woods? I don't know. Dude. It's spooky. It is sp- Oh, my God, it's so spooky. 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 Aaron does live in the woods. He does. He says he doesn't. That motherfucker lives in the woods. You can be anywhere in 15 minutes. That don't mean you don't live in the woods, no, motherfucker. you live in the woods. You live in the woods. Mm-hmm. Faux real. There's a creek in his backyard. There's a crick. Oh, it's a crick. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's one of them cricks in the backyard. There is one of them cricks. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's a crick. No, but anyway, so I walked in and, and I didn't realize that Brian wasn't playing bass because mm-hmm. the other shows I did, Brian was playing bass. So it was kind of a shocker for me. He's standing behind the guitar and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And then he said, well, Lucy's playing bass. And I said, who the fuck is Lucy? Who names your kid Lucy nowadays? What the <laughs> fuck? Ugh. Another girl. I'm just kidding. That's not what I said. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I was like, all right, cool. I don't know who this person is. And she said, he said, oh, she's, she's a great bass player. Moved down here from Chicago. And you know how Brian is. He doesn't give any details unless mm-hmm. he's arguing with you. <laughs> <laughs> um and and then you walked in and I went, holy shit, this chick's playing an upright bass. Get the fuck out of here. And you and I had kind of the same thing that Scott and I did. We just, musically, we got each other. Mm-hmm. I think we talked for four minutes and then started playing. And it was just, oh shit, I can vibe with her. And I, I'm assuming you felt the same way. Yeah. But it's cool because I don't play to bass players like most drummers do. I tend to play more off of guitar players because I'm more melodic driven. And that comes from... You do not know this, but that comes from probably the first three or four years I played. It was myself and a singular guitar player, and that was it. So I relied more on melody than I did the actual, quote, rhythm section in the rhythmic foundations. Mm -hmm. I was listening to guitar melodies going, okay, well, this is going to go here. Well, this is going to go here. And then I started gravitating towards listening to singers. Like all the original stuff I've ever done, a lot of my accents and starts and stops are vocal cued. Um because I lean that way. It doesn't make me good or bad or better than anybody. That's just the way I've always played. Mm-hmm. So when I find a bass player that I can go back and forth with and not have to, quote, worry about, it's awesome for me because then I don't have to feel restricted and like I'm leaving the melody line. Does that make sense? Yep. Because I've played with a lot of bass players that were great, but for some reason we just couldn't lock, and then I'm I'm leaning too much on them and missing melody lines and vocal cues, especially with somebody like Scott because he's an original artist. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a hell of a songwriter. I said, Scott, I'm not giving you any more compliments. You fucking bastard. Um, so it's it's always nice when I don't have that worry. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. So you're, you're a little badass. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Did you just do a half-ass Elvis on me? No. Okay. Anyway, so when... <laughs> I love when you hesitate. I catch you off guard. You're like, uh, no. no. Uh, when was our first show together? Because that's the one thing I can't remember. My timeline memory is fucking terrible. It always has been. I joke about having a bad memory. I, I, my memory is decent, but my timeline memory has always sucked. Was it February or was it January? Oh, you don't remember either. It was the it was the Galaxy show, right? Is that our first show together? Yeah. Yeah, it was. And that was probably March. Mm, yeah. I'm going to look on Instagram really fast because I know I posted a picture of it. Uh, I can't believe I have signal out here. Tonight's office, the galaxy in Louisville. <gasps> I'm so wrong. You are so wrong. I just pulled out my phone. Oh, no. April 4th. I know. And I put tonight's office, and whenever I do that, that means I put it there the night we're playing. Have you seen that picture, by the way? Yeah, I have. It's a great picture. I know, because your big-ass bass is in it. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, but that was April 4th. I know we had a show before that. We had we had the rehearsal. Shit. Did we? I guess not. I don't know. Mm, look at that. We bonded that fast. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I think that is I th- actually that is right because we went to we went to get a coffee because mm-hmm. I was like I'm going. Well, you said where are you going? I said I'm going to get a coffee. And you went I go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your best friend. 
Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. oh my god, best friend. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, so we went to Galaxy. Wow, that is crazy. Holy shit, we've only been playing together three months. Dang. Four shows in three months? We're good together. We're a good team. We yeah. are. Because musically, we understand each other. Duh. So, yeah, I guess it would be we've had three or four shows since April. Mm hmm. So it's only been three months. And we're doing the wedding today. La dee da. <laughs> My la dee freaking hallelujah. Did you like that? Did you like that one? I did. <laughs> I, I, I heard a good one on a movie last night, as a matter of fact. Um, Dick me dead and call me pregnant. But you have to say it in a British accent because it's a British thing. Well, Dick me dead and call me pregnant. I like that. I like it too. I like that a lot. I'm going to have to use that. Can Somebody run the only red light in town <laughs> here? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm a little bit angry. Somebody is angry. Um, so what are your plans? What do you, where do you see yourself in this Louisville music scene coming up on your one year anniversary? Oh, man. It's a loaded question, right? It is a loaded question. Um, well, take me dead and call me pregnant. I <laughs> gotcha. I don't know. Um, you weren't I'm expecting working, that, were you? No, I wasn't. I'm working on a couple other projects. Mm -hmm. Can um, you talk about them or can you not? I can talk about them. Oh, what well, do you um, tell? Do you know who Stephen Clark is? I do. Too. So you there's, know his band. There's like 17 Stephen Clarks in Louisville. Okay, well, did you know the band called the Ass, Ass Hollers? Hollers. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. <laughs> Stephen Clark's well, a good dude. So, um, he saw me when Scott, Brian, and I did that barn show thingy in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah, the one that Scott, the one that Brian told Scott I wasn't available for when I actually was available. Yeah, probably. That, that show. Probably. Yeah. Good job, um, Brian. <laughs> so he saw me there, and he was like, "Dude." You're awesome. You can really play. You're talented. Like, do you want to do something with? He's like, I want to do like a couple songs and do like a video shoot. And I'm like, yeah, sure. That sounds cool. Like, I'm down for it. Um, I'm actually going to be playing electric on this one, and I will be singing a chorus. Get out of town. Yeah, I can sing. Now, who's playing drums on that? I am not sure. I hope it's my friend Ian Bottomley. I do too. I like Ian Bottomley. Well, you should ask him. I will, I will text him when we're finished. Okay. But I'm going to be doing that. And Pretty then cool. I am... Now, wait. Freeze. Is it going yes. to be the assholers or is it going to be something completely separate? I'm pretty sure it's the assholers. Okay, cool. I'm not sure. I'm I'm po pretty positive. But okay. I think there's going to be like video shoot and I think I'm doing like two songs with them. Should be cool. Very cool. Um, And then I am taking lessons from a country bass player here in town. His name is Andy Tyler. Tyler Brown, something like that. Rings a bell. Doesn't he's, mean anything. He's really cool, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of trading lessons. I'm teaching him how to play with the bow better. Mm -hmm. And he's teaching me how to play slap bass. Oh, so you're going to be like the quintuple threat. Five quintuple? Is that even a fucking word? Don't look at me like that. I'm not even looking at you. And I know you're giving me shitty looks. Just stop it. Look at that cloud over there. That's so pretty. Oh, my God. That cloud is so pretty loud. Oh, my God. Uh, no, seriously. So you're going to be, you're going to add slapping to re your repertoire. Yes. And I'm going to try to book a few bluegrass gigs. I think he's going to throw some my way because he has too much in town. So he's going to be like, here, you can do this. Very You'll be cool. fine. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then. Don't you love those gigs? Oh, yeah. You can do it. You'll be yeah, fine. And then you fine. get there and you go, I'm not. Fine. And you're like, oh, going to moonwalk out of here. <laughs> I was never here. Uh, bye bye. Nobody saw me. Any, yeah. Nobody saw me. Yeah. Oh, my God. You guys look amazing. Oh, you guys are so cute. Congratulations. You should go baby. That's a big puppy. Oh. Hi, puppy. Hi. Hi. You're huge. So that was the bride and groom. They looked very cute. They did. And I like his suit, the Me linen too. suit. I like it. It's like an off burgundy linen suit. Mm -hmm. Her dress was pretty. Very into it. Mm -hmm. I'll decide if I want to keep this or not. All right. <laughs> I never know until I listen back. In my head, all my shows suck. And then I go back and edit them and go, wow, that's actually a good fucking show. Like, oh, oh man, this oh, cool. is actually kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I think it's because as you're talking, you forget what you say. Yeah. And then you go sure. back and listen to it and you go, oh, wow, that was actually cool. Oh, I sound intelligent. 
Everybody knows I'm not. Literally. I'm li- oh, my God. Look at you, Lucy Lee. I used it right, unlike Scott. Mm-hmm. 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 And he's supposedly listens to my shelves. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Such a liar, Scott. He's gonna hate us after this. He already hates me. Yeah. My snare is too loud, Todd. Anyway, yeah. what were we talking about? Oh yes. Uh, so you, he's gonna throw you some bluegrass stuff, possibly because mm-hmm. he's got too much on his plate. And I've been in those situations where, you, oh yeah, you get there and you get there and you, oh shit, I'm not fine. You just kind of you freak out. But I think the this is going to sound arrogant, and I don't mean it to, but I think the ones that are cut out to do this, do what we do musically. You'll find a way to make it happen. You'll mm-hmm. figure it out. Doesn't mean it's going to be perfect or you're not going to fuck up or make some massive flubs. But I'm pretty sure you figure it out. I think I, I think I can figure it out. I think I have enough um, tools in my little tool bag. I'll just pull something. I'll be like, oh, this is going to work. Oh, you know. Oh, my, my teacher told me about this a long time ago. I can use this. Actually, that's been happening to me a lot, like, in school. Mm-hmm. Things that, like, my private teacher from Chicago has told me. He's like, oh, yeah, you'll use this. He's like, you'll think ba- it's you're going to use it. And I get in school, and I'm like, huh, I'm using this really weird scale that I never thought I was going to use. I'm doing all these things. It's weird how so, that works, isn't it? Yeah. I was like, oh, oh, I kind of know I kind of know what I'm doing. No. I, I, uh, back when I was teaching, um, and I don't know if you know this, I taught for like 15 years or something like that, however long it was, 15, 16 years. Um, and back when I was teaching, I used to teach, I don't want to say heavy theory, but heavy theory based things around the drums because so many drummers don't play theory. They play by ear. Now, there's anything mm-hmm. wrong with that. I'm not busting anybody's balls. Just put that out there, fuckers. Um, but I used to teach them little nuggets of shit like that. If you learn this and master this one bar fill, it will fit in genre A, B, C, D, and E. Mm-hmm. You can get yourself out of trouble with it, which is different. I get it. It's different for scales, but music is music. I, I would always give my kids little toolbox or little little tricks to stick in their toolbox. And now every one of them at some point called me back or texted me and said, dude, the fucking thing you told me to do that I hated, it totally works. I'm like, yeah, no shit, dummy. That's why I gave it to you. <laughs> And I still use those. I have a bag of toolbox. Or, ugh, I don't know why I can't talk. It's because I'm in the country and it's making me fucking stupid. <laughs> Sucking out my brain cells right now. Um, I have a pretty deep bag of tricks. But most of my bag of tricks is to get me out of predicaments. Mm-hmm. It's not to show off or any of that bullshit. No. I read an article a long time ago with Miles Davis. And the guy that was interviewing him said, well, nobody really understands jazz, so... How do you know if you fuck up or what do you do if you actually he said make a mistake he didn't say fuck up. He said if you make a mistake how do you know what you how to get out of it whatever. And Miles said and he said and I quote I believe I could be wrong but he said if you fuck up you keep fucking up until you find one again. Mm-hmm. And that says stuck with me for 20 years. I that was like the oh, I blew my mind cheap bar star sound effects. It did though it made me think and go holy shit. That is the most poignant thing ever. And I am I'm most comfortable with getting out of a fuck up. Mm-hmm. Sometimes more often I'm more comfortable getting out of a fuck up than I am actually playing a song. It's like, okay, I got this safety net, I got this safety yep. net, I got this safety net. All right, I'm fine. Whatever I fuck up, I can get out of it. And I think that's important. So that's cool that your teachers taught you the same thing. Is mm-hmm. the point I was making. Oh, yeah, because I, f- I fucked up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit it. Yeah, you play bass with Scott. Oh! oh. Sick burn, bro. Hey, I'm that's not my fault. If no. I fuck up, it's with him. It's not my fault. That's true. He does take a lot of left turns. And right turns. Mm-hmm. He throws that shit in reverse at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, watch this. He, he does that in real life, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Okay, so anyway, um, so you've got those two projects coming up. Um, well, the one with the possible ass haulers, and mm-hmm. then the you're getting the lessons. Um, what else have you got your little fingers in? Um, not much. I've been trying to like kind of dip them in the jazz scene in Louisville. Um, Good luck. Yeah, there's um, not really, unfortunately, there's not really much of one that I can find. No, there, there's one here. Yeah, there it's, is. It's just not. Very big at all. And it's taken over by all the arrogant assholes that I go to school with. 
I love you so much because I was getting ready to say something along the same lines and you beat me to it. So I don't necessarily want to deal with that. To deal with that. Um, I think I probably should show up at like a couple jam sessions <laughs> just to be like, hey, bitches, I'm still here. <laughs> I am not going anywhere. You know, you like, said, hey, bitches. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, <laughs> How y'all doing? Hey. How y'all doing? Um, but I think for now, focusing on school i think scott's like my main focus right now mm-hmm. just because i know that i can we can we can really push this thing if we work it right and i'm trying i'm trying to like guide us in that direction <sighs> well hopefully he listens to you because damn sure don't listen to me yeah i mean i'm trying i'm i think i think both of us could get to him if we you punch him in the neck i'll punch him in the throat perfect perfect where can everybody find you my dear i am on instagram instagram my handle, <laughs> <laughs> as Scott likes to say it. You did say handle, didn't you? <laughs> I forgot Scott, about that. At Scott likes this. <laughs> um, Scott likes. It's Lucy, L-U-C-Y dot Ann, A-N-N underscore. <laughs> You're just <laughs> No, because I just thought of that. Scott likes this, likes this. <laughs> he said it, but I forgot about it till just now. Anyway. I remember the first time you, you liked something of mine. I went, who the fuck is Lucy? Oh, it's Miss Lucy. Oh, it's Miss Lucy. Actually, my real name is Lucille. No, it's not. It's Miss Lucy. It's, Lu- it's Lucille Ann. It's a pretty name. Oglesby. Lucille Ann Oglesby. Right. Miss Lucy. Yes, Miss Lucy. Miss Lucy. Where else? Are you on Facebook? I don't remember. No. I'm too young for Facebook. And th- oh. Oh. <laughs> I fucking hate you. No, you don't. You're right, I don't. I got nothing. I don't even know where to go mm. now. I'm too young for Facebook. Oh, fuck off. I am. No. When Facebook... Okay. When I, I know. Little, people were like... We were like seven and they would be like faking because you don't have to be like 13 or something. Right. So they'd all just like fake their age and sign up for Facebook. And I was like, this is dumb. I'm not going to do this. And I just... I never... This is ridiculous. It. I'm not no. going to do it. Dumb. So you're only on Instagram? Yeah, that's like my main social no, media. No, no, thing. I'm I'm not listen, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, something else, and, and I get most of my shit done from Instagram. Mm-hmm. I like Instagram the best. Me too. I'm not a big fan of Twitter. Twitter's a fucking time suck. Yeah, it is. It is. Shall we go play a wedding? I guess so. Do you want to? I mean we drove an hour out to this shit, so <laughs> <laughs> Did you get lost? I got lost. No, I made Chris drive. That's because you're a smart girl. <laughs> the address that Scott gave me, you cannot see it. Obviously, you guys can't see it. But if you could see about a mile down that road, that's mm-hmm. where the red dot on my GPS was. And a mile down that road, heavy woods. And I'm looking at my G- I'm stopped in the middle of a two lane road in the middle oh, of nowhere. Man. And I look at my GPS and I look out my left window and I went, Woods, sweet. Like, not even a road, just fucking woods. Just woods. Thanks, Scott. I appreciate you giving me the wrong address. We love you. We love you a long time. Let's go play a wedding, shall we, darling? Yes, let's go. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you for having me. No, thank you. Thank you. And please, thank you and please, please and thank you, don't fuck up on stage. No promises. That's where you tell me to fuck off, dude. Will you get with it? No. <laughs> seriously thanks for taking the time i appreciate it you're an awesome awesome person you're a hell of a bass player and uh louisville welcomes you oh i'm gonna cry don't cry that's just gross. <laughs> don't you're fucking ruin it i have one feeling and it belongs to my wife okay okay i have a feeling and a half just don't tell her i said so i won't okay i love your face you. see you shortly Hey guys, this is Steve Owens from Fascination Street Podcast here with a very important message. I'm awesome. I bet you thought I was going to say something else, but nope. What's important here is that I am awesome. I have a podcast called Fascination Street, and it allows me to bring to my listeners some of the most fascinating stories and guests. I started this show because I truly believe that everybody has a story, and I'm fascinated to hear those stories. In the short time I've been doing this show, I've interviewed actors, directors, writers, inventors, podcasters, 
musicians, pro athletes, Olympic athletes, actual war heroes, even a Bond girl and a luthier, whatever the hell that is, and of course, regular people. From people who wanted to be stars but never gave it a real try, to big company CEOs and people who got to meet their favorite president. I love getting to meet and speak with people who have a story to tell. I feel like everyone does, and it's my job to get them to tell it. You never know who my next guest will be. An Academy Award winning actor, a platinum selling musician, or your own mother-in-law. But one thing is for certain, you will be fascinated by their story. So come take a walk with me down Fascination Street. You can find this show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and of course, FascinationStreetPod.com. Well, that's it, kids. That's a show for the week. I hope you guys dug it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some laughs. I got some laughs, and I was there. Lucy's a good kid. Like I said, she's a hell of a bass player. She's got a really interesting story, and I hope you guys dug it. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to keep this close very short because I have got... I have a lot of shit to go do because those of you that are keeping score, if you are listening to this on post day, which is Thursday, June 13th, uh, in one week, one week from today, I will be on my way to Green Bay, Wisconsin for the Delana tour. Uh, For those of you that have been asking me, uh, I've been directing some of you to the websites of the various venues that we are playing, uh, but I've been getting a lot of questions about the Richmond, Indiana show from my Louisville people. I will tell you guys this, call and order tickets. I believe that show may possibly sell out. I do not have facts on that, uh, but that is the rumor I have heard through a few different people that I'm dealing with on the tour. So just keep that in mind if you are in the Louisville area and you guys want to drive up, which I greatly appreciate it. You are fucking awesome for doing that. Uh, you might want to get tickets in advance because it might sell out. And I'd hate for you guys to drive two or two and a half hours, whatever the hell it is, and get up there and you can't get in. That would suck. For a reminder, here are the dates. If you are in any of these areas or going to be in any of these areas or have friends in any of these areas that may want to come hang out with Delana and Steve Sizemore, Ben Noble, and myself. June 21st is Fatheads in Green Bay, Wisconsin. June 22nd is Sandy Hook in Hazel Green, Wisconsin. June 24th is Eastside Bar and Grill in London, Ontario, Canada. That's right. I'm international, motherfucker. June 26th is a Rockstar Music Hall in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. June 28th is Earth Angels Holistic Health LLC in Cleveland, Ohio. And June 29th is the Firehouse Barbecue in Blues in Richmond, Indiana, the show I was just talking about. So there you go. There's the tour dates. That's what's happening. I may or may not post a show next week. I'm not 100% sure. So this is your time to catch up. If I do post a show, it will definitely be my last one for at least two weeks. If I do not post a show next week, it will be my last one for about three weeks, possibly a month. I'm not 100% sure. When I get back from tour, I've got some other shit that I have to get my little... My little drumming fingers involved in, so I may be, I may be a wall for a minute. Did I just really fucking say a wall? Whatever. So I'm not 100 percent sure if there's going to be a show next week or not. If this is the last show, you guys have plenty of time to catch up on all my past episodes. Go to my website, go to the archive or the episodes tab, which is essentially the archive. That's where all my shows are. And for those of you who are like, oh, I'm listening to all your fucking shows. Actually, my numbers are higher for Scott Clark Part 1 than they are for Scott Clark Part 2, which means a lot of you motherfuckers didn't finish that episode. Anyway, all kidding aside, it'll be a great time for you guys to catch up on any of the episodes that you missed. You can hit me up at barstarpodcast at gmail to maybe drop me some topics of some future shows, some shit you want me to talk about. Uh, Let's get interactive with this thing. Hit me up on Twitter, um, which I don't use Twitter that much, but whatever. Just let's fucking give it a shot. Hey, you can hashtag Barstar. I don't really care. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you use, whatever social media platform you use. I'm not hard to get a hold of. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm out of here. I can legitimately say I have tour shit to get ready for. And that does not suck. Really cool. 
Make sure you check out DolanaRocks.com. Make sure you check out my website, BarStarPodcast.com. Make sure you find Miss Lucy on her Instagram handle. And Scott Smith says her handle. That's so weird. I love you, Scott. You're such a fruitcake. And uh, thank you guys for hanging out once again. And as I say at the end of every single episode, <gasps> go do some shit. Seriously, get the fuck out of here. Beat it. Get out here, go do some shit. Go buy some tickets to the Richmond, Indiana show. Or any show that you want to go to. Come to Canada with us. We don't fucking care. We uh, we are going to rock out. It's going to be awesome, and that's it. And uh, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. So until next time, I will talk at you soon. <laughs>